Zorim? And what is it that, what is it, what is the image of man that's attempting to be destroyed here? Because that's the conscious target of this. Um, and maybe in a minute we can go through some more of what, what it actually means, some, uh, some proof used in the Crab Nebula of why it is that the causality for this system couldn't be contained entirely within the Earth. I think one thing just to mention, not, not to leave things obscure by not mentioning them, is the tendency is, it's still a habit with society, not among some of us, but with, with society in general, even scientific workers, for the sake of public edification. In particular, they try to say things that correspond to what newspaper editors could understand, which is really almost nothing about anything of importance. Uh, even the desire to, know, to tell the truth is apparently not there anymore, as we've seen recently in the past period in these reports. But the uh, point is, is that we have to start looking at the universe now that what we have is evidence. For example, the long cycles of the galaxy. And we can demonstrate, and it has been demonstrated now, that these cycles are crucial in determining the behavior in the solar system, and particularly in terms of life on, on Earth. They're absolutely crucial in terms of life on Earth. And therefore, we have to, ha we have to think from the outside in. Now, you have, for example, you have a, a phenomenon in the galaxy, which, is, you know, which occurred about 1050, 1054 A.D., which is now a big uh, event there in the solar system, in the in the galaxy. Now, what we know about this is that this event, which occurred in finite time, you know, about a thousand years ago, it, as the Chinese observed it at that time, this event uh, actually is an event which characterizes a change in the galaxy as a whole. Which means that looking back. Uh, several millions of years, like 62 million years, this event occurred since that. Yes. So we now have in the galaxy a condition where a galaxy which is dominated is not something inside the, inside the galaxy, it is a characteristic, a functional characteristic of the galaxy itself. That's why the strange anomalies, otherwise strange anomalies of this uh, process are this uh, crab nebula, mm. and therefore we don't we don't know. But it's not wrong not to know in a sense, because not knowing, when you identify something you don't know that is significant, it calls your attention to the fact you better find out what it is. And uh, scientific progress, uh, experimental scientific progress, is really driven by some people who are smart enough to catch on to this realize that the fact that there's something there that we don't understand, we better find out what it is. It's like the policeman looking for strange things in the neighborhood. He investigates because there might be something that, he, that comes within his province of attention. And the Crab Nebula is not something within the galaxy. The Crab Nebula is a characteristic of the galaxy which became manifest about a thousand years ago, which is much more recent than 62 million years ago. And we're now at a conjunction where this effect is, we're, we're getting the effect of something that happened 62 million years ago. So from that, looking at these things from that same point of that record, we get an idea of what's, what's coming at us. And it's that kind of approach, the understanding of the galaxy, that we are an integral part of the galaxy. We are not something outside the galaxy. We are in the galaxy. We're bouncing around on the edges like a latecomer. It's like, you know, it's like the teenager up coming up to the ball, uh, <laughs> bouncing all around the place. So, and that's, that's our solar system, but that's a f only a few billion years ago. Huh? Now, now it, so therefore what we're dealing with, the threats that affect us right now, are effects which lie within the span of hundreds of millions of years ago, in terms of just this galaxy alone, and what we, what we try to understand about beyond that period of this galaxy is something still further. But we find out today that we as human beings, with science, are able to understand these processes or discover what the understanding of these processes have to be. And we find, as we found recently, by looking at the universe, not from the standpoint of particles in empty space, which there, there's a nonsense view, which is very popular, but it's nonsensical. But looking at this as a, a, a domain of cosmic radiation, 
and understanding how the different aspects of cosmic radiation interact. Like the case of we on Earth, well, we're part of the solar system. We're dominated by the sun. But the sun's a little puny little thing on the edge of the galaxy. And most of the important things that have happened in terms of life on Earth have heard become as part of the galaxy, not part of the sun. The sun is a little interloper there, is a like bum on the, on the block. And then if we you know, look at the galaxy, we have an event like the Crab Nebula. It has anomalies which tell us that that galaxy is not, that Crab Nebula is not something within the, the galaxy, it is a characteristic change which occurred in the galaxy. And this tips us off to think about some other things. Some new changes just recently. I, on this point, it just it's nice. Only this year, January of this year, looking at the Crab Nebula, we everything we thought we knew about it was, oh, everything that the, the officials thought they knew about it from the standard theory was completely overturned. Yeah. And it was exactly what you're saying right now. The idea that this thing could be treated as some kind of distinct object is now completely lost. Because you saw there are two major events. Beginning of this year, looking back at the examining the data, since 2008, we've had one of our, the, our major gamma ray telescope pointed at the crab. Mm -hmm. And it's significant. You can get a picture of what the whole gamma ray uh, sky looks like here. And in that, the crab nebula becomes it's a very bright, particularly very bright, uh, bright point. Looking closely at it through the gamma ray telescope, we were able to see that in two events happened since 2008, two major ones. In February of 2009, the gamma ray intensity from the Crab Nebula jumped by a factor of four over the course of just 16 days. Mm -hmm. Again, in September of 2010, and this is just looking back at this retrospectively this year, in September of 2010, it jumped sixfold over a period of just four days. The, the, the intensity of this in the gamma ray spectrum. Now, this is a very high energy part of the electromagnetic spectrum. First, just reaching that kind of energy is amazing, that kind of output. Over such a short time is amazing. But then what's interesting is not just the fact that it leaps that high in such a short time, but then that it manages to cool itself down in such a short amount of time, which rules out all kinds of other, all the typical kinds of processes that would be causing this. This rules out simply heating of the, of the gases, this rule that it would take, I think one estimate gives the amount of time it would require for uh, gases that have been heated that high to cool down, and it's on the order of, you know, millions of years. But this is implicitly occurring at a rate which is a rate of action which is fa faster than the speed of light, the calculated speed of light. Yeah. It, that's the crucial thing. And the fact that it's occurring in that form indicates that it's not a local phenomenon within the galaxy, it's a characteristic of the galaxy. And in fact, you can't find anything within the Crab Nebula as an object that would account for it. No. As you had those changes, nothing changed about the pulsar in the center, mm -hmm. which implies that there's something, some much larger process that's initiating the changes. It's not some, not the standard model that the pulsar is somehow pulverizing everything outside of it. That's clearly not what's happening. Well, that's what all this indicates is, of course, the fact that we need a rebirth of science on this planet, where science is being degraded. We have people who have no idea what science is anymore, even in the form we had it before. And there are a lot of things out there that, since we're coming to this 62 million year cycle point, which is a period of the greatest threat to species on Earth, is that 62 million year cycle. It's the wipeouts of whole species occurred. 90% or more of the species wiped out with one of these things. As the time has come, we've got to pay attention to this. Right. And that's so it's not just the defense of us and mankind against what's happening right now in terms of these seismic effects. But we, do, we have to think about, ahead of, about mankind in the universe. Because we are in the universe, we are a factor in the universe. And we've got to come up to our responsibilities. Well, on that note, I guess this is a good place to wrap it up for this week. So thank you for joining us this week, and we'll see you next week.